Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of our Lord for another opportunity to be at his feet. Thank God you are here today. Now, I want to remind you that the virus is still around, so please do take care of yourself, and may God richly bless you. Amen. Today we have some interesting subject for our discussions. The other day I went to church and then I asked them, how many desire for changes in their personal life? And almost everybody raised their hand indicating they all desire some form of changes in their life. Then I asked the following question. Is God also interested in the changes in your life? And we find out that the desire of God is that we will be changed and transformed. Because God wants to make saints out of sinners. He wants to make saints out of sinners to transform us from one state to the other. He wants the poor to be rich. He wants the sick to be healed. These are the desires of God. The scripture said, let's get 3 John chapter, verse 2. 3 John 2. It's only one chapter, so let's take it. That is the desire of God. 3 John 2. 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that I may prosper and be in health even as thou so prosper. So God's desire is that we prosper even as our soul prosper. Remember, it is not prospering before your soul prosper. No. You need to be saved first. And the desire of God that you will be saved, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we see the desires of God. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. All these desires are there. And God, in fact, Jesus died that we may live. He died for sinners that they will be made sins. He died that the sick will be healed. The Bible said by his own stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2 and 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. These are the desires of God. And he wants us healed. Who his own self bear our sin in his own body. On the tree that we being there to sing should live unto righteousness by whose strength you were healed. By whose strength you were healed. So God wants me to stay healthy and well. This is the desire of God. He is expecting that because Jesus paid the price for my healing. Hallelujah. You see, so God desires changes in our life. Any area of our life we find ourselves. He desired that there will be some changes. But he have his own way of doing things. I am saying God have his own way of doing things. He wants us to discover his ways. When we get to know his ways, then we can lay hand on the principles of operation. And we will be transformed and changed. Hallelujah. Today we are going to look at a few of them. And we are going to see. Because everyone desires that his life will be blessed. This is the desire of God. And God called Abraham and said, look, Abraham, you are a father of many nations. Indeed, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So Abraham became a vessel for blessing. Say, you are a channel for blessing. And by thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And out of thee, I'm going to make a covenant to bless all nations. Out of thee will come the Messiah, the, the Savior of the world. And he made all these things known to men. He revealed them unto us. And he wants us to know it so that we can walk with him. Hallelujah. God desire for changes. But now, when I came to the church and I asked, how many desire for God to change things in the life? Everybody's hands was up, plus the pastor. You see, the truth is that all of us want to be Many, some aspects of our life to be changed. But who is a changer? And who, 
How is he going to do it? That is the point. You see, God has his own ways. He has his own ways of doing his own things in his own timing. Hear me again. God has his own ways of doing his own things in his own timing. Hallelujah. He is at work in us, but he has his own ways of doing things. This hour, I want us to look at something very interesting about God. When he came to Joshua, when Moses passed on and God handed the leadership to Joshua, now he instructed him on what to do so that God can work things out in his life. So it is important that we discover these fundamentals, that our life can be blessed. He showed him what to do. Joshua chapter number 1, and let's take the verse number 8. It's a very popular scripture, Joshua 1, 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good sources. You may observe to do all that is written therein. Hallelujah. Observe to do all that is written therein. And thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And thou shalt have good sources. Observing to do all that is written therein. This book shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate in it day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then thou shalt have, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good sources. You see, so you see a corporation of Joshua and God. God showing him ways how he should go about it. And he said, you are going to take time in my word. So this is principle number one. For God to change us. To transform us, call for us that we lay hold on the thing declared in the book called Bible. We discover the truth of God's word and pay attention to everything He has said. And as we believe them, now we begin to practice them. And now God will begin to work in our life. He will work things out. And some of the things God did with Joshua up to today is awesome. It's on parallel that a man will stand up and stop the moon and the sun while he had battles to fight for the law. God said, go, I'll give this man to you. And as we wait, it will get into dawn in the evening. Night, will get the, they will run away and get a cover. So all that Joshua, they stand. Stand there. And you moon, be there. You are no more moving. And God answered that prayer. Because they were working in cooperation. This is a man who had worked with God. He had learned the ways of the law. He had followed the instructions of God. And he was working with God. How can that be? Go to the basics and learn how God taught him. That he should observe to do according to all that is written therein. And, may, and that as he walked in those things, he will prosper in his way and have good success. That is the foundation. Hallelujah. You see, so the foundation number one is God's word will bring the desire changes. God's word. It will not just work because you wish it or you read it. No. Read it. Study it. Meditate in it. Observe to do all that is written therein. And then thou will make, <laughs> thou will make thy way prosperous and thou will have good sources. That is a principle one. Listen, God knows how to change. And this is what David said in Psalm 1. Psalm 1 and then verse 2 and 3. Mm. Marushi Barahata. Psalm 1 verse 2 and 3. But, the, but his delight is in the law of the law. And in his law do he meditate. Now listen, I want you to know there are certain things which are from Joshua. He said this book... Delight in the law of the Lord. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. But now the emphasis is what? Delight. Are you happy reading the scripture? Are you searching for it like gold? Is your heart craving for it? Yes. You will discover the ways of the Lord. 
and his law meditate in it day and night. Joshua meditate in it war day and night. <laughs> you will have good success. And then the verse number three says war. Come on. And ye he shall be. Look. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law do he meditate day and night. And the next phrase is, if thou art going to delight in the law of the Lord and meditate in it day and night, it follows that you are going to become what God has planned for your life. And, but he shall be. He shall be. He shall be. I want you to know the change is coming. The change is coming because somebody have heard the word of the Lord. Somebody have got their delight. Somebody is waiting on God. And then lay on on the thing God have given to him as you practice these things day and night. <laughs> it's a matter of time. Your life shall be changed. And the Bible says, ye shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. Mm. Rivers of water that bring a full fruit in its season. It means your life will be planted at the right place. There will be season for you. You will be watered and you bear fruit in your own season. You will prosper in the thing which God has caused you to do. So listen. What do we do with the word? Meditate in it. Feed on it day and night. Make sure you study it. Let it be in your heart. Believe the word. Trust God with all your heart. Commit your way to him and walk in it. Begin to observe, to do all that is written therein. As we pay attention to the details of the word and begin to do what God wants us to do, his spirit will begin to work things in and out. Why? Because Jesus said, look, you don't know. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Come on. So you are not only just reading the word, or meditating in it, but you are just there. His spirit and his word are at work in you at the same time. You meditate in it, the Holy Spirit will now begin to do a new work in you, and you are on the path of change and transformation. God desires changes, and he wishes uh, all of us. The poor will be rich. The sick will be healed. Mm. Sinners will be saved. They will be changed and be become saints. This is the desire of God. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health even as thou so prosperous. Ah? Uh, and when you read 2 Peter chapter number 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter 3 9. The law is not slacking concerning his promise as some count slackiness. Mm. But it's long suffering toward us. No willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. No sinner should perish. No one to go to hell. That is not the plan of God for you. He wants everyone to be changed and transformed. Yes, by the word of the Lord. <laughs> Jesus asked them. There was a time in Jesus' ministry when some of the disciples left him. And then he turned to the twelve and asked them, Will you also go away? When you read John, uh -uh, John chapter number 6, and then from verse number 67. Let's look, let's look at something very interesting there. And this account is so powerful. John 67, verse number 67. John 6, 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will he also go away? And Peter said, what? Then Simon Peter answered and said to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. 69 and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ the son of a living God to whom shall we go thou have the words of eternal life and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ the son of a living God listen to whom shall we go we have the word of the Lord given to us to whom shall we go we have the Holy Scriptures given to us it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believes Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hear me, somebody. The truth is that when you discover these principles of God and you begin to buy into it and lay hold on it, you work your way for a change. 
for a transformation. The thing God has prepared for you, your eye have not seen, your ear have not heard. The thing God has prepared for those that love Him, as you love Him, as you delight in Him, as you desire more of Him, and you allow yourself and get in, soak in Him. Now, the change start taking place. How? By the power of a word. The word of the Lord will work in you and things will begin to happen. How do you know, brother? We have tested it and have found it. Because God is a faithful God. His word works. Hallelujah. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone that believes. Oh, it is the power of God for change. It is the power of God to transform me. Oh, from poverty to riches. From sickness to health. It is the power of God. That is our work in me. For it is God who worketh in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Thank God his word is at work in me. I pay attention to it and meditate in it day and night. And he is at work in me. He is, I'm not left on the archives. He is still at work in me. Hallelujah. He has not finished his work. And as I read, as I meditate, as I pray and think about his word, his spirit now got chance to bring the needed changes. He is working in me. He is working things out. Somebody says, how is that going to happen? Go and ask him. Go and ask the creator. How things work. I am not going to attempt to answer that question. How, how is it going to happen? Ask him. Go to Genesis. You will find it. Because the Bible said, when he created in the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. And void. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh-huh. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the water. Listen, when nothing has taken shape, when nothing seems to be working, when nobody has an idea about the things that are going to be unfolded, nothing has taken shape. All that happened is that the creator spirit moved upon the face of the water and things started taking shape. You ask me, how are things going to happen? I'll come here to your way that the spirit of the Lord shall move upon me. The spirit of the Lord shall come over thee and thou shalt be turned into another man. The spirit of the Lord shall come upon me and changes will take place. You say, how are they going to happen? Go and ask the Lord. His spirit is given to men. Because we are children, he has given us his spirit. Galatians 4, 6. Because we are sons, God has given us his spirit and we are crying, Abba, Father. We have received it and it's meant for our change. It meant our transformation. It meant to bring us to a new place where the purpose and the will of God will be done in us. God is manifesting himself by his power and by his glory. Marie Sokotia Rabasia Kua. Listen, so listen. So the principle is very simple. Pay attention to the word. Stay in it. Learn to obey and be faithful. Trust the Lord of your heart. As you feed on the word, your life will start to change. Things begin to happen. Miracles begin to take place. Why? Because you pay attention to what God wants you to do. And he will work it out. Yes, he wants to bring changes in my life. He wants to work it out. Now, but there are many a Christian these days. This is a sad thing, but let me say it. Many a Christian, mm, he's a believer, all right. But somehow, in his walk with God, he has become a lukewarm Christian. He closed from Sunday until the next Sunday, Bible go on reserve. He will not open the scriptures, not even reading from his own phone. The scriptures there. He will not read anything about God. His heart, he's not delighting in the law. He's not desiring God. Marushibaka, Yekaba Sayaba. When we walk on that path, you walk into coldness. The Bible says you are neither cold nor hot. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. He said, You are warm. Come on, come on. That lukewarm brother, that lukewarm Christian. Revelation chapter number 3, verse 16, 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. <laughs> so then, because thou art lukewarm 
and neither cold nor hot. I was speedy out of my mouth. Listen, there are many a Christian today. He closed one church Sunday and that's it. Somebody may even go to church once in a month. And if it is okay, I am a brother. And when you ask hallelujah, he will shake himself. He ba 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 ba. He ba 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 ba. God is not afraid of your tongues. No, no, no. The devil is not afraid of your tongue. He will just do some warm up. Sunday morning he's in church. He la ba 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 ba. He la ba 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 ba. He la ba 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 will not drive demons away. That which will do it is the power of God, which is at work in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Let me try to explain it here. When we came to the Lord and believe in Jesus Christ, He had given us His Spirit and life, and this is how the Bible called: "Ye are we, we are the light of the world." That day, when you confess Christ, the light of God begins to shine in your life. You receive the light pat on your forehead. And I have not seen a natural. I cannot see that. But believers have the light of God dwelling in them. And as you walk close with God, you begin to aglow. Maria Sekaba, hear me. When you begin to walk with God in close relationship, the light in you begin to aglow. When they went to the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, revealed himself in his glory to James, John, and Peter. They saw him on that mount. That is what had happened to the saints. We have the same spirit dwelling in us. And now, as we walk close with him, as we feed on the word, as we practice the faith, and as we walk in relationship with him, the light in us begins to aglow. Maria, hear me, somebody. We are here for kingdom business. About my father's business. Hear me somebody. As we walk with him. As we study the word. As we meditate in it. There is a fire burning in us. There is a fire of the Lord. Being a glow in him. The preacher call it. Romans chapter number 12 uh, verse number 11. It says, be fervent in the spirit. Let your light shine. Let be a glow for Jesus. My yes, let your light shine. Fire. The fire of God in you. Let it aglow. Changes will now begin to come because the fire is burning in you. Nasi Morhatiaba. Shekomosia Rebonda. You say, demons are fighting me. Father, you don't know all these witches in my house. Listen. When light and darkness meet, who will run away? You are a believer. But you become that lukewarm. There was a scientist I met. And he was explaining something to me. He said, brother, do you know something? He said, what? He said, do you know that? <laughs> oh. Gems cannot settle on anything very hot. Or very cold. I said, explain that to me. He said, look. The truth is that when we talk about germs and you go under the microscope in this thing, when it's very cold, germs cannot settle on it. And when it's very hot, they cannot settle on it. But when you're lukewarm, lukewarm, <laughs> when it's lukewarm, 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 neither cold nor hot, uh -uh. It's good for gems to settle on. So that believer who is lukewarm, not fervent in spirit, and he is in between, he is neither cold nor hot. You are a good candidate for demonic attack and evil influences in your life. You will wish many things to happen, but they will not happen. Why? Because you are not cold nor hot. When you are fervent, when you are hot, when you are vibrant in the things of God, in the spirit of God. God now got opportunity to work things out of you. But you are a Christian. You are not. But you live like an unbeliever. Sunday morning you go in present church. And then you go home. Do nothing. Until the next Sunday. And you think everything will work out. It won't work out. It doesn't work that way. You are either cold or hot. You become hot. By fellowshipping with others. By being in the faith. When you come into the communion of saints and they start praying together 
even when you are cold, your fire will begin to burn. Because you come into the bonfire. You come with fellowship with the saints. And you begin to pray with them. If you don't believe it, go into our chapter number 4. And from verse number 29. When they came to their own company and began to pray. The Holy Ghost came upon them. My, in the place was shaking. And God did mighty things with them. The Bible said greater grace came upon them. Yes. So I believe in congregational prayer. When we come together and we lift our holy hands to him, things begin to happen. The weak become strong. Spirit are released. Grace is transferred. We, many things are being imparted to many lives. When we come together, but when you absent yourself, as for you, don't, this one, oh, we are, not, oh, they are only having a prayer meeting. So prayer meetings are not necessary. How can you be warm? How can you be hot? When you absent yourself for prayer meeting, when all of us gather together in the presence of God, he come upon us. We are changed and being transformed. We are being affected. You will not be there because that is not part of your program. All you need, you want Sunday morning and you show up that everybody will know that you came to church and that's it. No, 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 no. That lukewarm attitude will never bring the progress you desire. Listen, when you become hot and fervent, when you become and walk closer to him, think God begins to reveal things to you. Things that our eyes have not seen. The, year, the thing he has prepared for your life, he'll begin to work it out. How would that happen? Go and ask him. The creator. Go and ask him what he's doing. How he did it. His spirit shall brew over thee. But when you come in there, Sunday, once in a man Christian, oh, pity you. You are neither cold nor hot. You are there. You say, brother, I am busy. You are busy. Be busy. You are busy. Be busy. Be busy and become lukewarm. And let demons settle on you. Let them come and influence your life. And make all the worst decisions of life. Hallelujah. The Lord said, if you will not repent, he will speed you out of his mouth. Brother, you are a believer. Change that attitude. You cannot stay in that and make heaven. Hear me. If you want to make heaven, be fervent in spirit. Join the same at prayer meeting. Stay up your spirit. Be ready and an active soldier for Christ. And be willing to fellowship with other believers. As you do this thing, blessed are ye. You will be transformed. You will be changed into a new person. The changing God desire for your life will start to work out. How is that going to be? Go and ask him. He has begun a good work in me. He will finish it. He has begun a good work in you and he will finish it. He knows what he is doing. He knows where he is with your life today. But hear me. Brethren, the truth is that these days, many, a lot of things engage us and we defer everything about God into tomorrow. Your tomorrow may never come. If you know the thing that matters most, if you don't believe it, go and ask <laughs> Mary and Martha, they were at home, Jesus paid a visit. And all Martha will do is the good services. He was busy serving, moving up there. Finally, Martha got brought up with those issues. And so he went to the Lord and said, Lord, don't you care that I'm serving alone? Let Mary come and help me. And Jesus, oh, Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary have chosen it. And no man, no one will take it away from her. Listen, are you making decisions for the needful things? The things you need that will bring the changes? Or you are making the busy body, good services, without any effect on your personal life? Jesus said, Sit at his feet. Be fed by the word. Let there be changes. Let the word of God affect your soul and body. Be renewed in your mind. Receive the engrafted word of God which is able to save your soul. Receive the thing that are meant for your good from the Lord. Sit at his feet. Meditate in him day and night. Let there be transformation. Let the word of God work in your life. And now you will begin to see what will happen. Brother, listen. Let this is many people are playing Christian. He's just playing around. 
He doesn't know what he's doing. He goes and sleep and nothing happens. Brother, that is not it. Please come home, come home, come home. Join the saints in prayer. Receive that fervent spirit. And now move on the get on the move. Get into the word. May your spirit be a glow for him. May the desires of God burn in your heart. Lay her on the Holy Scripture. Pay the price for your changes. Pay the price for your future in the word. Maru Zayaka. Deep, deep for it. The deep color for the deep. And he said, he is longing for the word. And the word of God is sweet in his mouth than honey who taste in his mouth. Get that desire. Lay hope on it. And let Jesus Christ reign in your personal life. Let the word of the Lord have his own place. And then you can expect, you have the right to expect change. I want to be praying for you, brother. We are in a time when believers should come closer to God. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to, uh, to you. And our life shall be transformed. By his spirit and by his word. Changes are coming. The things you desire will follow. He will make a way where there is no way. Miracles will take place. Blessings will come. Because you pay attention to what is required of thee. I want to be praying for you now. Get on your feet everyone. Marisindo bosakayaba. Shetunda hatima. Yekariya sandaba shakaba. Father I bring the brethren before you today. In the name that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray my God that the illumination imparted into their life today. Let it sink deep. No demon, no devil will steal it. Let it be deep. Cause a desire and a longing for a meditation in these truths. Bring the light. Let it shine. Let it aglow in their soul. May the light and the fire of God burn in thee. And begin to lay things on, lay hand on things that matter both. For the changes you desire in life. And for the joy of the Lord to flow through you. May your life be a blessing to many. May you be transformed. May you be changed. May the blessings of God be your portion. We honor you Lord. We give you thanks. And we give you praise for the things you have done. We honor you Father in Jesus name. Amen. You need to give your life to Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Raise your hand. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, I receive you into my heart. I have sinned, but thou love me. Forgive me all my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I bless you, my God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May he bring the desire changes as you pay the price for it. And may your life be transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russell Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you. See the King.